Hello, everybody, and welcome to Art for Art's Sake. Today is episode 33 of this new virtual program from the St. Lawrence County Arts Council. My name is Maggie McKenna. I'm the director of, the S of SLC Arts, and I want to welcome you today. Um, we are so excited for this whole program. It's been just such a wonderful way to stay connected with our local community, stay connected with our local artists, and, and show everyone how art can be created during this crazy weird time, even in your own homes. I want everybody to be thinking about how creative they are in their own way and stay inspired. Um, if you're an artist and you would like to participate in this program, you can reach out to me directly, email me at director at slcartscouncil.org, or you can just message us here on Facebook and I'll catch it that way either way. Good. So um, definitely reach out to us. We're doing all sorts of different things. So even if you feel like Oh, I'm not a professional artist, or I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not published or anything like that. I don't care. We don't care. We want to see you. We want to see what you're up to. So please think about sharing your, your talents with us. Um, I also want to thank all of our previous sponsors of this program. Thank you for helping to keep the Arts Council going during this turbulent time. Um, if you're interested in supporting the Arts Council, now's a great time to go do that. You can even add another tab on your Facebook. To, next to Facebook, go directly to slcartscouncil.org slash give and make a donation today. Well, I'm really excited to introduce Jason Hubbard. He and I have been working together since I started at the Arts Council. He's the president of the North Country Art Teachers Association, and he actually invited me to their weekly meetup earlier today. It was really nice to see all those art teachers, but Jason's an incredibly talented artist and incredibly talented educator. So Jason, what are you going to talk to us about today? Hello, how's everybody doing today? Um, I'm going to be discussing how I teach uh, digital photography or photography in general uh, and how I use it to uh, really promote arts in my school district at North North Fork Central School. And we're going to get into some digital arts as well. Oh, I'm so excited. We'll take it away. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, so thank you for joining. Uh, I'm going to so my name is Jason Hubbard. I am a local kid. I uh, grew up in Clifton Fine and uh, graduated from St. Lawrence University, where that's really where I, actually in high school is more of where I really started to uh, develop a love for photography. Um, into college, uh, same thing, really uh, started to uh, take photography classes. And um, at that time, it was all film photography. Uh, makes me sound really, really old. So, you know, in uh, basically around uh, 98 to 2002 was my time period that I was in uh, at St. Louis University and uh, never believed that this whole digital photography thing would pick up. And uh, it was obviously incredibly wrong. So, uh, but from there, I uh, definitely have learned a lot over the last 18 years of teaching and quite, kind of want to share some of those uh, things with you today. So, I'm gonna take control of the screen here so we can see uh, what I have to discuss today. So starting off, so, okay, again, Jason Hubbard. So here's our art for art sake. And one of the most important things that I wanna talk about today is that we don't go out and take photographs, we make photographs. So anything that you are doing uh, when you are taking photographs or going out to try to you know, turn or uh, hit the shutter button on your camera, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made before you take the photo. Um, so the first thing that we discuss a lot in the arts is the elements of art. So these are all things that you've learned in the past. Usually it's in elementary school where you're talking about line, shape, color, value, form, texture, and space. But it's something that we get into a lot more with my middle school students, so seventh and eighth grade students at Northern Norfolk, and then all the way up through to the uh, high school program as well. Um, so from there, this is usually the elements of art happen to be the first project that I will give out to my students. So I'll tell them to go out and take a ton of photographs, and I want you to think about the elements of art, and I usually have them take six photographs, and they have to decide which element of art they are highlighting. So sometimes you might have more than one element of art that is in a photograph. So you might have a photo that has a lot of line, but also has color. 
So usually what I have them do is I'll have them go out and take uh, six photographs and, but they can't repeat the elements. So get some thinking about the elements of art. Um, the next group would be your principles of design. So this is kind of the art curriculum, right? So if we were talking about curriculum of art, we're talking about the elements of art, we're talking about the principles of design. So once you're getting into the principles of design, balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and unity, you're getting kind of past your elementary art period, uh, time period, and, and now you're getting into a little bit more complex thought in art. Uh, so basically what we think about is the elements of art, I always love this analogy, elements of art are kind of the ingredients that we use when we're cooking, and the principle of design is kind of how we arrange them or what we make out of it. So it's kind of a, a nice thought process with that. So when teaching the principles of design, we tend to get into that, like I said, in eighth grade. Um, and that is kind of the big base that we build off. And we talk about this on a, on a daily basis of what is the dominant element of art? What is the dominant principle of design in a piece of artwork? So from there, that's the basis of what I'm looking for in artwork. It's the number one elements of art, principles of design, the very big things. From there, when we're getting into more of the photography specific, um, this here I have to thank from Greg Kai from uh, SUNY Canton. He works at SUNY Canton and uh, he shared this with me about 10 years ago uh, when I was teaching a uh, photography course at SUNY Canton. And, and I use this still to this day. Uh, great resource. And I, I will teach this exact same lesson if I'm teaching seventh graders, eighth graders, my high school photography program, all the way up into college programs. So it's just very basic rules. The things that we want to think about when we're teaching or when we are going out and to make a photograph. So simplicity, new perspective, rule of thirds, use your foreground and know your frame. So number one is simplicity. So what do you want your subject to be when you are going out and taking a photograph? You wanna show your subject as clearly as possible. You avoid distracting hot spots or shapes that'll distract the viewer. And a very important thing is, and I say this all the time to my students, if you take a picture of everything, you take a picture of nothing because you don't have a subject. What is the subject? What are you photographing? How are you arranging that within your frame when you're taking the photograph? Next up would be a new perspective. And I'm sure if you asked any of my students that I've taught over the years, this is when I tend to hop up onto the table and take, you know, kind of uh, make a fool of myself and uh, take photographs of the, you know, right at the top of people's head or get down on the ground. But so we have knees, use them. Don't go around and take photographs at that four to six foot range. We want we want to show some uh, people something different. So don't just show us the same perspective that we see every day. Get creative. Most important photos might be the ones that you're lying on the floor, standing on the rock. So I kind of make a big deal of that to try to get students to think about these new perspective when they're taking photographs. Next up, rule of thirds. This tends to be one of my really, 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 really big ones, uh, rule of thirds. Um, so asymmetry makes photos more interesting. So I always, uh, it's, it's really awesome that now that we have like cell phones and cameras that we can actually show this. So I will take my, my camera out on my phone and I'll show these grid lines. And, uh, and every time the students, I don't have those. We'll go in and we'll go into the cameras and figure out how to turn them on. So basically, uh, I hope you can see these, Maggie. Can you see my cursor on the screen? Yeah, okay, good. So basically what we're looking at here is you have the rule of thirds uh, is that you have, you divide your frame in three this way, divide your frame in three this way, and whoops, and the number one thing is we do not want our subject to be right here. But instead, we use these little crosshairs here, 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 and here. That's where we want to put our subject. So I make this into such a big rule that I'll take 20 points off the top if their subject is centered. I really, really make a big deal out of it in 10th or in seventh grade. I always get big eyes, you know, they're, oh my God, I'm going to fail. No, but it's something that we really, really want to think about. Of course, you can break these rules. And this might be one that, you know, some people that have a little more experience that like, oh my God, I can't believe he's doing that. 
but you can break the rules once you know the rules and you, you've practiced this a while. But for now, when we're really looking at that strong composition, rule of thirds is something that we really pay attention to. Next up, we have foreground. So this is when we're talking about space in a photo or a, a drawing or a painting where we want to think about foreground, middle ground, background. We're building our art, or art vocabulary so we can have an educated conversation over uh, about artwork. So use your foreground or the area that is closest to you. So the foreground could be a useful tool to draw your viewer into the photo. When used right, it can also help to make your photo more interesting. Try putting objects in your foreground that help that complement and don't distract from your subject. This one is a not used as often as the others, but it is something that is very, very helpful to kind of get you thinking about, you know, how you can make your photographs stronger. Um, this was a big one, definitely when I was younger, not as much now, but I'll explain that as I go. So uh, know your frame, it is your photo. So know everything that goes into it. Get that distracting leaf out of the corner or that bright reflection away from your subject. Before you press the button, scan the whole frame from top to bottom to make sure you want everything you see. This was unbelievably important when we were using film photography. So uh, we live a, in a time of instant gratification now. So you can look at the photo as immediately when you take the photo. So take the photo, look at it. Nope, that's not what I want. So back when you're dealing with film, you'd have to really, really pay attention. You know, you'd have 24 to 36 photographs and you'd have to really make sure that whatever you're photographing, you want in the photo, because you're not going to figure out what you did right or wrong for another, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, depending on your time frame, to get your, your film processed and then enlarging your photos. So that's another one. So those are kind of the your basic rules that I'm looking for for my students. And again, I teach this for seventh grade, eighth grade, all the way up to the college level. And those are the very basics. Now, I teach photography a little bit differently than I learned, uh, a lot differently than I learned. And I have a little bit of a different philosophy on teaching photography than some do. And that's all right. We all have different ways of teaching that. I still teach darkroom photography. So I, we still do, I, I've heard it called analog photography. I called it, you know, black and white photography, whatever you want to call it still do film photography in a dark room using an enlarger, but I don't teach it for the first 20 weeks of the semester. So I leave that for advanced photography. Instead, we get into digital photo first. Um, the major reasons behind that is one, I want the students focusing, a little photography fun for you, uh, focusing on composition. I want them to be really, really paying attention to composition and they tend to learn, students tend to learn very quickly about that because they do have that instant gratification. Second reason why I do it is um, we are, I participate in a big art show called Scholast uh, CNY Scholastics in Syracuse. That happens to be in December and we, we tend to, they actually uh, judge the photography uh, analog or black and white in the same category as the digital. So we tend to work digital. It just works uh, better for the students. And lastly, it's actually a lot cheaper for me as a school teacher with a budget. I want my students to be taking strong photographs by the time they are using up all of my material of film and paper in, a, in chemicals in a dark room. So that's kind of the major reason, reasons why I do that. So as we move on from there, I am always blown away by what my students do and take for photographs. These are the very basic rules and kind of where they go throughout their, you know, six, five, six year time period at Nord Norfolk. So this one is Skylar Fetter. Skylar was a uh, absolutely phenomenal student. I think Skylar is now a junior at Columbia. Uh, so she was uh, definitely really inspired a lot of photographers, uh, or a lot of students behind her because she really put the time in of really going out and taking a lot of photographs. It was kind of uh, what she did to relax. She just absolutely loved it. Uh, so this is an example of a gold key at Scholastics and she actually won a silver medal at nationals. So that represents the top 1% in the nation. 
And she actually, this photograph here hung in the, uh, the US Capitol. It represented our region in the Capitol. So very, very cool. But that's kind of where we're going with the photographs. And this kind of shows you the end and where they are. But can I show you some other ones? Uh, look at my little typo down there. Nice, I like that, okay. Uh, so Erin's a senior this year. She would have been a sophomore at this time. So this would have been just getting into the high school photography and really thinking about our photographs. Again, you don't just go out and take this photo, you make it. You gotta really think about your lighting. How do you want your lighting coming in? Uh, what do you wanna do to create it interesting, your composition, and really thinking about her color scheme with the red and green color scheme, complementary color scheme. Uh, a lot of thought process that goes into that. So this would be kind of our, you know, 10th grade, beginning of high school. I usually have 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And that's kind of where they uh, start and then go from there. Uh, this is Erin's piece that she did her senior year. So Erin uh, took this photograph. This was a gold key photograph. And uh, she actually won a gold key portfolio at the Scholastic Show as well. I'll show that in a little bit. Uh, very, very abstract, very interesting photograph. All right, uh, here's another one of my seniors that I have now. This is Erin Stickney. Again, uh, had her in 10th grade as well. And this is kind of where she's gone with her photographs. Nice warm colors, really, really nice photographs. This would be uh, Nico Sweeney. This is kind of 10th grade started. Uh, these three seniors are now uh, unbelievable role models that they've had from, uh, uh, or unbelievable role models for the future students. So this would be another one of Nico's that she did in sophomore year. Again, a gold key for the Scholastics, but all the way down to seventh grade. So this was a photograph that we uh, did, or had my seventh graders take in seventh grade. So Sydney, I think is probably a ninth or 10th grader now, um, but she took this photograph. So multiple reasons why we do this in seventh and eighth grade. So when taking photographs in seventh, eighth grade, I'm actually building source material for the drawing assignments. So we at Northern Norfolk really put a very, very large emphasis on having original source material. So students can go on the internet and steal something, but we don't want them doing that. We want them to be original. We want them to come up with their, use their own brains, go out and make a photograph that is really, really creative that they can then use for the source image in their drawings. So this is one that Sydney used for that. Turned out absolutely beautiful. And she was one of only five uh, seventh graders that won a gold key that, that year. So really, really strong photograph and kind of building on those same skills. But they're the same rules. It's still basing off elements of art principles of design and your rules of composition. From there, so now we're looking at, so this is one of my current sophomores, just getting into the photography, getting into, um, well, I mean, they're a year in now, so doing very, very well. Uh, gold key photograph, looking at portraiture, same thing, that composition, strong value range, really, really good stuff. Uh, so this would be, Erin uh, graduated last year. So she, uh, she's, um, this would have been her sophomore year, or, sorry, junior year. Uh, again, kind of finding a style, kind of coming up with a creative style and you're gonna kind of see where the students kind of go from there. It's really, really cool stuff. Uh, same thing with this one here. This is another one from Erin that she took her junior year. Now we're getting into some pretty cool stuff. Okay, so this would be Grace Furness. Grace uh, graduated last year. This is during her junior year. Absolutely love this photograph. A lot of thought process went into this photograph, but you're kind of seeing where students can evolve in their skill set. So sophomore year, they tend to kind of learn the basics behind it, but then this would have been after getting into advanced photography and learning a little bit more about cameras. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this here, website here, and I'm gonna go over and talk about a couple things that I use that are very, very helpful. Uh, first one is just kind of, I use this to kind of learn about um, teaching cameras, so digital cameras. This is the mode dial that we see on the, on the top. They have the PTV AVM wheel. This is actually, uh, I can tell that this is a Canon mode dial because the Nikons will say PSAM but kind of learning, students will learn a lot about what those settings do. All of these are presets. They're things that the, the camera is doing for you. 
the PTVAVM is where you're kind of uh, the student is deciding that they want to get a little bit more advanced. So when we're talking about photography, there's a lot of different settings that we can do. So you have uh, this would be your apertures on this side, and this is shutter speeds on this side. So when you take a photograph, you can take a photo with a variety of settings. So this recommend, uh, represents time. This represents your how open or how much light you're allowing in. So again, kind of your aperture. And this is when we're getting into a lot more advanced photography and not something we're gonna discuss in a 30 to 40 minute video too much, but it's kind of showing you where they go with it. Uh, but learning how to control the settings on the camera and what the different effects would be on the photos as well. Uh, so this is kind of getting into shutter speed. Uh, really, really interesting. So 1 25th of a second, which would be pretty quick. Uh, 1 20th of a second, more time is passing, which is creating more motion in the photo versus 1 4th of a second, same thing, a lot more motion. So this is spinning in that fourth of a second to create that you know interesting effect in the photo. So as we go to the photo that I just showed you of Grace, I also use what's called uh, Flickr, a uh, great website. And there's one major reason why I use this. So this would have been a photograph that was taken 2017 by Grace. Grace had already taken another photograph similar to this and had a lot of success with that. And then she really, really loved um, painting with light and using blurred motion in her photographs. So that's actually her father in the photograph. And this is Grace. And right down here is why I love this website. So this will tell every setting that Grace was using at the time that she took the photo. So an f-stop of 13, uh, which means that it was closed in quite a bit. And this was a 13 second photograph. So it took 13 seconds to take this photo, which means this is actually steel wool lit on fire. And that's why your father is doing it. And 13 seconds as he spun it on a wire, then you're seeing little shards or flakes of, of uh, flame coming out of it. And, and it's, it looks really, really amazing uh, once you see that in, you know, when it's done. So 13 seconds versus a fraction of a second that we normally see in a photo. And lastly, this would be like where your zoom is, but this is also another very important one, which would be your ISO. ISO, if anybody uh, remembers from the film photography days, that had to do with how sensitive the film was. So you'd have like 100 speed film, 400 speed film, and it kind of go from there. As it transitions to digital photography, it's the sensitivity of the sensor. And we can actually change that as we're taking photos. Before you would just have to take the photograph with whatever speed film you had, and you had to take the whole roll before you switch to something different. Now you can change it up every time. So this is when we're getting into a lot more of the advanced type of photography. And it kind of shows you where the students are and kind of where they go. And we learn a lot from critique. So we will usually we'll do assignments every uh, or assignments every single week. And usually I have them due on Tuesday. So they'll go and have independent photos due each week or every other week. And then I'll give them a, a, an assignment of some sort to kind of expand their, uh, their uh, skill set on the opposite weeks. Some students really, really, really like the painting with light, others don't. So it's kind of, uh, so Grace really, really got into this and chose to do this more as her independence. And you'll see some other styles that other students went in and it was really quite exciting. So this is kind of where Grace went from here. So these are photographs, these are not digital art. She's actually using strings of light and she did an entire portfolio of these and they're amazing. I absolutely love this portfolio. Very, very strong. Um, so you're seeing this string of lights that she could change the color. And these are probably 30 second photographs. So they take a long time, uh, very, very creative. And uh, again, this took about three years of really uh, practicing and coming up with a, a phenomenal style. So now we're getting into portfolios. Okay, so this is kind of showing you where the students go. Uh, so again, this was Skylar's. So 2017, she won gold key portfolio at Scholastics. So Scholastics is a about 
5,000 pieces of artwork are submitted to this show. And it represents 13 counties all the way from Rochester to Messina. So to get anything into the show is a very big deal. Uh, it only accepts 30%. Uh, Top 5% get gold keys. Uh, so out of the portfolios, I think there's usually about 120 portfolios and this would represent uh, the top 10 in the show. So very big deal. Uh, Skylar, so really, really amazing portfolio that she submitted. This was her gold key. And you can also see where like there were individual awards as well. Here's Grace's. So now you can kind of see where she's, so a portfolio, you're kind of getting us a uh, grouping of eight photos and they have to have some sort of unify, unifying theme to it. And that's what you're seeing here with this light source that uh, Grace was going with. And out of all of the portfolios that were submitted to the show, Grace received the best photography portfolio. So we're very proud of Grace. She did an absolutely phenomenal job on that. Moving on from there, uh, so you're seeing a totally different style. So this is another senior in this class. So Erin, I've already shown some of her photographs but she really liked the portraiture. So allowing the students to have a creative uh, choice on what they want to do and what is their style. And that's what you'll see that each of the portfolios are very, very different. And I really encourage that with the students. What, are, what is your style? What is it that you do that is different than your, uh, than your classmates, than anybody else in the art shows that we participate in? So this would be one from Aaron. This is Erin uh, Dickinson. So again, she won a gold key portfolio here. And actually this photo here uh, received a national silver medal. So top 1% in the nation. Uh, again, fantastic portfolio. And now we're gonna get into something a little different. So this was actually two years in a row, Erin Stickney. So you saw Grace's last year. Aaron won the best photography portfolio with this portfolio. So, and it's a little different. It's not just photography. So now we're getting into digital art. So when we're working in digital art, we're talking about photography and layer manipulation using Photoshop. So we use different layers in Photoshop and the students have learned over years to kind of how to come up with uh, some really, really interesting results but that doesn't happen unless you're dealing with strong photographs. So what we really work on is taking strong photographs and then from there some students really like to go more of this digital art layer blend route and then others that's not really their style they'll kind of go a different direction. So this is what we're looking at from Aaron Stickney. I, yes I have three students named Aaron all in the same class. So uh, this is another one by uh, the Erin took part of her portfolio. She won best photo portfolio and also won the best photo in the entire show. Uh, we're talking 800 12th grade photographs that are in this show. And then there's 11th, 10th. I mean, it's, it's very, very competitive and unbelievable photograph. And you're going to kind of see some more of what her kind of development along the way. So now we're getting into the more of the digital arts. Here's another one from uh, the digital art from this year. This is from Erin Dickinson. She also won a uh, national silver medal with this. Uh, so you're looking at three photos here. So actually I'll go up here, obviously with portraiture and uh, water lilies of some sort. This one here, you're actually looking at blinds that, that are running opposite. So blinds of a curtain. These here would be like, uh, that is uh, railings on a staircase. And these shapes here, that actually represents, or that's actually a photograph of a um, laundry um, basket that she used. So she has three photos that she's merging together there, just photos around her house, you know, uh, different things around her house and then how she's arranging them. Very, very creative. Uh, so this was another one from Erin Stickney. And this also won a national silver medal as well. Uh, so you're again talking about really, really, uh, great photography, great light source. And Erin has a love for uh, makeup as well. So she's a makeup artist and uh, she kind of brought those two skill sets together. And then you see in the green here, that's actually like a macro, macro photograph of ice. So she's getting into some pretty cool stuff. Here is a junior, Aiden Donnelly. 
Uh, and Aiden won gold key at regional and also won a gold medal at the national level. So our for very first for North North Fork gold medal at the national level. Very, very cool, very proud of Aiden. So he'll be back next year. So moving on from there, on the left we have, uh, so this would be um, a digital art piece done in eighth grade. So I did this uh, this year with my eighth graders and they absolutely loved it. They did a phenomenal job. So this is Anna Hall. She's one of my eighth graders. And uh, again, same skill set, same exact thing that I'm teaching my high school students and they're coming up with some phenomenal results. I love to see what they create. On the right, uh, Nico. So this is her digital art piece. So she kind of taking her skills and going in a different direction, very uh, different style than the others. Uh, so now we're looking at one from Erin Stickney. So this again is, so you saw her 12th grade portfolio, but now you're looking at like what she was doing in 10th grade. So this is again, a, something that she's developed over time. Um, so we're looking at, Oh, it's called Penumbrum, I think it was the title of it. I still don't know what she meant by that, but that's okay. Uh, but I can't, I couldn't even tell you what's in here. It's something like, uh, I know a plant of some sort uh, with berries on it, but pretty cool stuff. Same thing here. So this would have been Aaron's in 11th grade, year later, really, really creative, really going for that, that nature uh, type of uh, work. So she, that was tend to be her subject matter. And then she obviously saw a lot of success when she got into more of the portraiture with that. I uh, love this piece as well. So this is one by Nico. And again, this was in 11th grade, kind of going into that digital art as well. Really, really cool stuff and kind of see where she developed from there. Um, so here's another digital art from Aaron. Uh, again, just manip uh, diff layer manipulation, really, really good stuff. So that would be the uh, kind of what, I showed you some examples of what students do and really that's all I do. I teach them the very basics of Photoshop. We get into, uh, you know, how to use Photoshop, what layers look like, and then how to like uh, correct photographs using the different tools. But then the real magic comes with the layers, the layer blends and kind of seeing what they come up with. Um, it's definitely one of the most engaging projects that I do. The students absolutely love it. And they you know, come in multiple periods of the day so they can come in and, and uh, work on the computers. Uh, luckily, I have a very, very supportive district at Nord Norfolk. They provide us with some fantastic software and allow us to participate in these art shows. So it's been really great. So that's what I have for you. This is so awesome. I mean, oh man, I've seen a lot of this work because we set up the Scholastic show last year. Um, unfortunately, the Scholastic show was canceled this year because of COVID-19, but um, we certainly are talking about doing a virtual show or, or some kind of some kind of display of that work um, digitally, but you are showing such incredible work here. I mean, uh, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's oh, definitely oh, a very you. rewarding as a teacher uh, to see what students come up with. It's, it's a very, that's kind of what my joy is as being an educator is kind of seeing what students do with the skill set and kind of where they go from here. Awesome. I love it. Um, this has been so cool. If anybody has any questions, if you want to just throw them into the comments, I can, I can pull them up. We can wait a moment there um, for anything to pop up. But um, I just, I was just thinking that we just started this uh, SLC Arts members, um, members only Facebook group. And in that group, a lot of our artists have been sharing their work and saying like, can you critique this? Have you had, you know, I think that people want to share their work and share and like hear other people um, like learn from other people. So um, I definitely recommend anybody who's an artist to go jump in there and and join um, that group if you want to kind of bounce ideas off of one another. It seems like you're such a supportive teacher and I think that um, it's it's just great to have that kind of support as a student, but I think also people who are you know, adults and working on their own now, they would love to have that kind of support too. So really inspirational. Well, thank you very much. And, you know, and using critique, I'm not saying any big secret here. I mean, if any, any artist that's been in any kind of art program and obviously definitely in college, but in a strong program in the middle school, high school, all the way up through, 
critique tends to be a process that is uh, can be a little intimidating at first. Uh, you know, you you know when we put our artwork out in front of our uh, of other people, it's it's kind of an extension of ourselves, and it's you know it's something that's very very intimidating to kind of hear what other people say. Um, and basically, we work on uh, you know more middle school, right? We're really really focusing on um, positive feedback and then constructive feedback. So it's never a negative, but it's something that what could you offer for some feedback to the student? And then from there, uh, you know, my photo students, uh, like not our 10, 11, 12, I get yelled at if we don't do a critique. Like they really, really want critique and they, they really want to do that. So it's been, it's very supportive. And anybody that's gone through a finance program, you know, they'll they'll say the same thing as far as critique, uh, getting feedback from somebody else and listening to what somebody else says because you might be missing something because you've seen it so often. And then somebody else will look at it and you're like, I, I never thought of that. I never saw it that way. So it's very beneficial. Absolutely. And Emily Garland says, ask Jason to workshops. I guess you've been tasked. I guess so. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing this, Jason. It's been such a pleasure to, to hear from you and to see what you and your students are working on. Um, this has been Art for Art's Sake. Have a great day. Thank you very much.